There we go. So I'll talk you through the, the, the new in ingestion process. So from the moment the installation is done um, and tested together with my colleagues, with support of, um, of Sophie, um, we'll go into, uh, well, actually during the test, you will already see how it works. And that's what I will demonstrate now. So this is a combined work of, um, well, quite some people involved. I'm, I have the honor to present, but it's hard work from Sophie, from my colleagues, Bert, Arco, Serge, um, Mattia, um, he's very important, Mattia working at uh, Sinica, because he, uh, he manages the HTTP API for the, for the cloud. Um, so it's a, it's a combined effort. The main components, well, you've heard already the, the replication manager. Uh, another important component is called the import manager which is actually um, a user interface comp and a component uh, uh, series of APIs running at Maris to um, ingest the data and, uh, and check the data, check the metadata. Then we have a component called the EU.HTTP HTT API, um, and that is what we call at the cloud to make sure that the data is loaded into the cloud and that we can also trigger to, for example, unzip a zip file as it comes from the replication manager. And we have B2Safe, and that is where the data in the end is stored. And actually behind the scene, we also have a component called B2Handle that um, provides the PIDs, so the persistent identifiers for the files um, published on the cloud. So the workflow. Uh, if you've attended the training workshop last time, you've, uh, you've seen this part of the presentation already. Just giving you a, let's see if I have a mouse, yep. Just talking you through the, through the workflow a little bit. Um, we have here the replication manager, so this is the data, uh, data center side, uh, where we have the whole workflow as uh, um, Sophie presented with the replication manager, CDI files pre prepared, uh, we have a, a coupling table, um, the ODD files or the connection to the database. And it's really, it's, it's a quite a big step. Um, I think that if you have a database connection and you publish the CDI files, at the moment you publish them, then the, the files will already be created. So there's no difference between the metadata and the data files. And that also goes for the restricted data. So the restricted data, they don't go to the cloud. They stay on your end until they are requested, but they are already generated. And now we can have the, at the, in the current system that's still running, we can have the problem that the metadata was already there for a year. The, the line in the coupling table was there, but once it's re uh, requested a year later, it could be that the metadata doesn't match to the data anymore. So that, that is a, um, that's a different, uh, well, it's a very important improvement. Um, so, well, we call it a kind of a ping pong game almost uh, when we were describing all these, uh, these steps because it's a constant communication from one end to the other. So when you, oh, where is, yeah. when you publish the replication manager, the, um, the input manager is notified, it picks up the, uh, the metadata, <laughs> treats it, and at a certain point, it's, uh, um, so it does some QA, QC, pre presents you the logs, it's more or less the same as, as now. Um, then once it's done and the files, uh, the valid files are, are identified, because it could be that some metadata files, they are, uh, well, discarded. So for the valid files, then the, it will uh, notify the, the cloud, the implementer will notify the cloud to download just for the valid files, the data. The data will then be moved into the, into the cloud, check there. You will get some logs back also from, uh, from that, from the, from the check in the cloud. But of course, it's already checked here if it's ODB. Um, then when you are, as data manager, you are happy with both the metadata checks and how it looks and the data, you get the last signal and you, you push it into the cloud. It gets a PID, well, then the whole process is ended, but you'll see it in practice now. Um, providing back the PIDs to the replication manager. Everything is archived, and then you can continue with the next batch. 
So what is important, even though you can publish multiple batches at the same time, you can say, okay, these five are ready to, uh, to, be, uh, to be ingested, it will pick up one after another. And only when one cycle is completed, the next one will, uh, will be harvested. So this just to read this next slide, the other slide uh, to read later. For restricted data, it's for the metadata is exactly the same. It will check, but for the data, nothing will happen. The data will stay at, at your place. Only when it's requested via the user interface, then it will be released when it's ordered, but you, you then allow that release. Um, and it will be temporarily stored only in the cloud. So if, the, if there's restricted data in a certain order from a user from six different centers, it will, it will build up one zip file and it will, one after another, um, get the data from these replication managers, build up one zip file for the user and um, offer it for download. And then once it's downloaded it, it will remove it so we do not keep the restricted data on the cloud for longer than necessary. So it's very important. You still keep control over the restricted data. So now I will go through the steps, main steps of the process, publishing the metadata, the checks of the metadata, publishing the data batch, which is actually a download by the cloud. Um, then we unzip the data, we run several checks, and then in the end, you can move metadata and data into the production. So there's a big difference now from the, as you already see, and maybe if you have the uh, experience from the current work in the download manager, you do not need to email something to my colleagues anymore. Um, you trigger the process. When it's on fully automat, you don't, do not need to be in contact with my colleagues anymore, if you do it well. If something goes wrong or you have questions, they are there, of course, for, for your support, but you can trigger the whole process yourself. So first, publishing the metadata. So that is, as you do it now, you have to create a batch of CDI files and you have to prepare the data for that batch, either in the coupling table via, via a link to the database or the pre preprocessed files. So assuming that is done, then we can now go into the, because I will do most, most of it live, otherwise it gets a bit uh, boring maybe. So this is well, an example of a replication manager. This is a test one running at Maris. We do as if we are Rijkswaterstaat in the Netherlands. We're not, but uh, uh, we have that for test. Um, this is the import manager side. This is where you, uh, you will have to uh, work on. This is, the rec uh, uh, this is for handling the RSM requests. So that's for the orders of restri uh, restricted data. I will not go in that it's almost the same or practically the same as it is now, but it's in one screen. So if we go into the import manager, you can see now that I have a series of batches that have already passed through during my test. They're all dark green or red. Red, then I've discarded them somewhere along the process because I thought the data wasn't good enough. Green, they dark green means they have really finished and the next batch, it's ready for the next batch. On the other end, I have the replication manager. You saw this already in the slides of the of Sophie. This is a very, very handy page. Um, actually, my colleagues will have access to this also during the testing phase because they can then help you out with uh, configuration and checking. Um, as Sophie indicated, it's very important to have the right Java ver versions and the right uh, setup. So with this, we can, it's maybe a bit small, but we can, we, we can really see what is the configuration, so we can also test with you um, if something goes wrong. Um, well, this configuration is valid. So we have a whole series of your whole setup of all the paths. Um, then you have here the screen of all the batches, and we'll use that because this is where we can publish it. Another one. Uh, Here's all the batches that have been 
delivered before that are in production. Batches that have been cancelled. But let's, uh, yeah, and there's also an about page which shows the, the version. Also very handy for us to know in which version you are, you are running, but also for yourself. Huh? So let's start with uh, publishing a batch. This is the list, this is reading from uh, the prepared list from the, 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 the zips that are in the specific directory. So if I say, okay, let's uh, use um, number six in this case. You can see now it's in the queue. I could place more in them, but it will take them one after, one after the other. So let's uh, go for one only. And what you will see then, we had nothing here yet. <coughs> But it has triggered the, um, uh, the input manager already. And the input manager now knows that the batch has been created for this replication manager and knows that it has to start to work. Now I'm going back to my presentation. So I will switch a bit up and down to not forget certain things because they will happen, well, under the hood. So from this moment on, this is one action that you do. You, you indicate several batches, then you actually have to wait. There's two more moments that you have to do something, and I will, I will indicate which. If I can find my presentation back. Here it is. So we published it. Well, this is the input manager. When it goes to production, by the way, you go now in the test system, then everything is red. Once you have indicated later when everything is tested and you move to production, then the screen will just turn blue. But that's, uh, that's for later. Um, replication manager, as I said, we can, we can look with you we have a master dashboard of all the installed replication managers. So we can, well, more or less sit on your chair to support you. We will not do it without any uh, discussion with you, of course, but this will help us to see which batches have been published, what are your logs, um, and we can, we, can, um, or we can cooperate with you to fix certain problems. Also later, huh, when, uh, so also after we do, we've all moved to production. Click the dashboard. So this is more for, for backup, for me to check that I've um, provided you all the, uh, the information. Uh, last year I did it really on slides one after another, but I'm not going through that. Um, in, the, in the replication man manager, you can also uh, check the status, of course, of, of each of the steps. And you can see the whole process going. Um, I will show you later. So what happens at a certain point, the uh, input manager has received the batch and has indicated, provided it a batch ID. And that batch ID is provided back in the replication manager. Um, very important in the communication with us. So then if something gets stuck, we will always ask you for this batch ID to, uh, to know where to look. Then what happens is that the metadata, and that's already ongoing now, it's um, on, the, on the import manager side, so on the, on the Mara servers. That's unzipped. It um, runs a sequence of checks. And that is if you have been working with the download manager in the past, you uh, formerly my colleague Flavian did that. Now we have, you have my colleagues Freddy and Arco. Um, and that was more or less manual. He did checks and then he provided you back the logs. Now it's just online. So it will just, when the, when the step is done, the logs will be online and we will, we will see that. You can see the history of all steps being undertaken. And at a certain point, uh, you will get an email to check visually, because the check is done of the, of the files, to check the logs and to check the locations. It's just like you have now in the, in the import environment, where you, well, we always especially want you to check the locations because that's a frequently made mistake that coordinates are swapped, you are on land or um, uh, Maybe a trajectory uh, is really uh, badly, uh, um, badly shaped. 
but also check the content of the logs. So we will go back again. Refresh now. There it is. It's, uh, it says pass these steps, and it's now ready for a check. In the replication manager, when you refresh, you will see the same status. It will say here that it's uh, human action is ne necessary concerning the metadata. And you will, um, <coughs> well, it's connected to my email address, so I will now have also an email in my mailbox saying, okay, this, this batch is now ready for a visual check by you. And what you then do is either from the replication manager or here, I don't know, it's doing it again. It was the black one, right? If you click this link, it will open the, ba the batch, the metadata of that batch in a, in a kind of a test interface. Um, so just, just your batch now. And you see the, close it here, you can see the locations of it on the, on the map. And we are looking for ways to improve this, but what you can do here, if there's, let's say if there's a certain item on land, you would want to discard it, you can, the only thing you have to do is just indicate it here. So, okay. And this is actually already enough, but we want to build in a confirmation uh, URL that you say, okay, now continue with this one. But now I've indicated these two can be forgotten because they are bad, bad metadata. You can also check, of course, um, the metadata itself and how it looks. Huh? You might have been working in, uh, in XML or something and don't know and here you can really see in detail, okay, this looks uh, pretty good. This is uh, how I want it. So now, if we go back to the, uh, to the input manager, and we indicate, okay, I'm ready, I've, I've checked it. I update, and then the system continues again. And we'll, um, as I said, you have these, these were the logs that you, if you've worked with us before, with the, the, the imports of uh, CDI data. These are the type of logs and they are now just online for you to review. Um, in this case, I think it indicates that there are potential duplicates, which is not a big surprise because we've been using the same test batch over and over again. So it, it identifies that it's a potential duplicate, which doesn't mean, by the way, if it's potential duplicate, it's an actual duplicate. Maybe you know it's just a dip same location but different different depth or um, and so that it, it comes up from our algorithm that it's a potential duplicate but it may not be but it will just ask you ask you to check here so we go back to the results and we see now that um, by now it's already moving to what we call status 3000 it's waiting for downloading data files from the partner because now it's going to pick up the data um, from the replication manager okay and now I will show you which steps. Which steps there will be done on the, it, at the meantime. So it's notified in the, uh, yeah, they see the notification. There's the email, so that that's, has been passed already, yeah, but that, just to show you what's going on, the check we did, we indicated it's okay, that it moves on. Um, then it's um, uh, actually triggering the cloud to download it. In the past, we had a, during development, we had it as a push, as an upload, but that gave really a lot of uh, disturbances in the, in the system. So now it's the simplest there is, it's just, knowing, okay, for that replication manager, I have to download that batch, and it downloads it to the cloud. A 
and if you follow that, if you are, normally it will go quite fast, so you will not be watching this, but you can see in the replication manager in what status it is, that the data files are downloaded. Then the files are there on the cloud, zipped, so they first need to be unzipped, and then run a, a series of, uh, of checks. What we do first is a kind of a technical check. So we check the checksum of the files, compare that to the checksum of uh, how it was. Uh, we compare the length of the files, if there's no zero bytes uh, files in it. Um, we uh, uh, check the, the CDI identifier, if uh, requested files in the formats exist, etc. Everything is logged in the, in the import manager, so when there's uh, issues that will be available in the logs later. Um, if actually all the files are turn out to be bad, or if there's no, no data in the batch or something, then it will automatically cancel it, and you will see that in the input manager. We could do some additional quality checks. At the moment, we do not do that many. We extract some information from the files, but we do not do checks because, well, especially ODV is already checked directly in the, in the replication manager in the new uh, situation. And then you end up by then at the second step where you have to do something. So then the metadata is checked and for the files with correct metadata, the data is downloaded, checked, so the next step, next logs are available. So we go back. Let's see if we refresh if it's already there, yes. Perfect. And there's a new status here as well, which means actually there's a, for this batch, there's now again human action needed. Uh, the data has been harvested. It's now waiting for PIDs, but that's only the persistent identifiers are provided when you say now for this whole batch, okay, please continue. I'm okay with, the, uh, with that. Uh, you can move to production. So if we go here into the, um, to the input manager, you see now, wait, waiting for human approval to go to test production. So later it will of course be official production, but now it's test production. So during the test of the replication manager and the communication with the input manager, this is where you will go to. Um, we can check the logs again. We can see here that from the 10 files in the batch, I deleted two. I said two are okay, so eight are left. Uh, you can see all the steps that have been done in the meantime. And you can check the logs, and if there's data logs, they will also be there. And now we have to do the same thing, and we say, okay, oh, sorry, wrong one. I want to go there, there. I'm okay with this, proceed, update. So, so now it's going to through a whole step of uh, a whole series of, of steps to uh, to do some last um, uh, preparations, and yeah, of course this is a test batch of uh, ten files, but usually you will offer maybe thousands of files at the same time, um, and this will be loaded into the production database. And the production database at the moment is already 2.3 million or 2.4 million by now uh, metadata files. And um, I will demonstrate after lunch uh, the new interface, and that runs on Elasticsearch. So one of the actions you will see uh, when we go through is to build up the, the indexes for Elastic. So this will usually take some more time, but it's actually nothing to worry about anymore for you, because you've passed this stage, um, you've indicated it may go to production, so, well, you'll get an email when, when it's done, and then it's ready for the next one. So if you actually have a a series of batches ready, from now on it will just continue, it will indicate to the replication manager at some point it's done, it will feed the, the PIDs, and it will automatically pick up the next batch, and you will get an email again that the next batch is at the stage that it needs to human check. So you can, you could wait for just every time the emails to, uh, to, to pass by, or keep an eye on the system, but that's, well, waiting every time. So if we go back, then we, I will show you which, uh, the 
steps are undertaken. Well, this is just for you to read, but there's all, all kinds of uh, calls and uh, the data is being moved into, uh, into uh, iRODS. And when the data is moved, this is the definite file. So that file will get a persistent identifier. And with this ident persistent identifier, we also create a version. So we know version zero is the one that we push in now uh, with, with the, for the unrestricted files. The next update you will make will be version one. It will get a new PID, but we know the history. We know that with this CDI, there's two versions then at the time available. And when you do another update, it's version three. So that's also a big improvement in the system because for the data products, if a data product was created uh, two years ago, now you only have the latest version available of the data file. But in the future, when there's a data product created now, and in two years time there's another one, you know exactly from which version of the CDI files and of the data the, um, the data product was created. So that's for provenance, for fairness, as Dick presented, really important for the fairness of that data product to know yeah, which files were used, and of course, additional information, which processing, etc. So yeah, I've indicated already live that uh, to, uh, to move to the next steps. Then with what are these final steps? We extract some additional <coughs> metadata, more or less, from the ODV file. So we extract, for example, the P01 code, so that we can also use that in, uh, in searching. Um, at, we couldn't do that when the data was distributed, but now we have it on the cloud, so we can, uh, we can extract it. Um, and then some step will, uh, will be done to uh, to get the PIDs for the files. And once the PIDs are retrieved, it will also share that with the replication manager. The version is assigned, is also presented to the replication manager, and then the files are archived on the replication manager. And then some more steps. And then in the end, it should turn dark green, and then it's ready for the next patch. Now let's see if uh, the system is ready for that. As I said, this might take some time, this last processing, to get it ready for production. Sorry, I'm going to make your screen black again. Yeah, it's working. So let's see. It's there already. Well, it's already there. You can see that the, the files have now been moved into production. It's dark green. It's ready to receive the next patch. And if we go to the replication manager view and we refresh, then the current batch should be gone. Yes, it's gone. And our batch is now there in production. So it's, it's confirmed, it's uh, archived, and it's uh, so also on your uh, on your local server where the replication manager is, everything is uh, archived in there. So fantastic, it worked. And as I said, you get a confirmation that the batch is uh, there, and you can view it uh, later. Then you can also view the batch in. Uh, production. For restricted data, um, if you remember the diagram that I showed when I started, it's the same workflow for the metadata, but in fact uh, it's much shorter because there's no data step. So after the metadata step, it's quickly moved um, into production, but also in that case the replication manager is uh, uh, provided with the, the version information and uh, um, 